barking orders at the pack leaders, who relayed them in similarly boorish fashion. With a clunking of armour and jangling of chain mail, the mighty army of five thousand orcs rearranged itself into smaller units. The archers made their way to the back. Those bearing spears and lances stood shoulder to shoulder at the front. The orcish chieftain followed the preparations approvingly. His thick black lips curling back to reveal his magnificent tusks. He was well pleased with what he saw. A growly laugh sounded from his throat. He took a deep breath and let out an almighty roar. The shuffling and stomping came to a halt. Nobody said a word. Nodon broke faith with us and abandoned us to our fate. The fleshlings think we're going south but our route will take us north to found a new kingdom, he proclaimed, confident that the prospect of a new homeland would make them forget their tiredness and spur them into battle. He drew his notched sword and pointed at the enemy below. No Don's northern lapdogs are in our way. We had to flee our homes because of those cretins. Destroy them! and the Grey Range will be ours. We'll be in our new kingdom before the fleshling soldiers are in sight of the peaks. Ha, 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 he laughed malevolently. I hope they send their cavalry after us. We could do with some meat. His troopers grunted and snarled excitedly, pounding the halves of their spears on the ground and banging swords against shields. He raised his arm and the noise stopped abruptly. The silence was broken by a question. Couldn't we march past the northerners instead? Ushnots, who had excellent hearing, knew at once which of the five thousand troopers had spoken the treasonous words. Cashbug was a troublemaker, who took after his father, Ragshaw. Ragshaw had met his death shortly before the Battle of the Black Saddle in circumstances not dissimilar to these, after questioning the wisdom of laying siege to a mountain. Ushnots had thought him an excellent tactician, but criticism, especially when voiced in public, was not to be tolerated. Besides, Ushnots made the decisions, and he always knew best. He had killed Ragshaw on the spot and he was contemplating a similar fate for Cashbug. Silence! he bellowed, throwing back his head in an intimidating roar. The display made little impression on the offending orc, who stepped forward, sword in hand, shield raised defensively. Why not march past them and get there first? We can occupy the halls while they dash out their brains on the gates. He stood with his legs apart, bracing himself for the blow that was bound to follow. It's time we did things differently, Ushnots. After what happened at the Black Saddle, we're not as strong as we were. Maybe if you'd listened to my father, we'd be back in our kingdom by now. Several orcs grunted approvingly. For Ushnots, the interruption was unwelcome. The sweet smell of victory had soured, replaced by the reek of rebellion. He drew himself up to his full height, bared his tusks, and tensed his muscles. Then he took off, bounding down the slope, and thundering to a stop in front of Cashbug. I've got a better plan, he snarled, squaring his shoulders. There was a nasty glint in his yellow eyes. He made a feint with his sword, then, ducking beneath Cashbug's raised shield, he whipped out his dagger, rammed it into the trooper's armpit, and pierced his heart. Green blood gushed from the wound, and the insolent trooper thudded to the ground. My plan is this. Cashbug dies first, just like his know-it-all father at the Black Saddle. He glared at the others challenging them to object. Anyone else want to talk tactics? He wasn't surprised when no one stepped forward. The real shock came a moment later when the dead orc stood up. Cashbug reached to his armpit and touched the wound.